The fires of heaven begins with Elida, the new Amerlin seed, having a meeting with the Aes Sedai that chose to stay with her. They discuss Randall's tour and recent news from around the world. The Aes Sedai don't show a lot of respect for Elida, and they barely acknowledge her as the Amerlin. Pat and Fane shows up and goes to see Elida, and he tells her what he knows about Randall Thor. He knows that the Horn of Valir and the Shadow Logo Dagger are in the tower, so he sneaks into the storeroom and takes the Shadow Logo Dagger back. He's caught by an Aes Sedai, but she turns out to be Black Aja, and she lets him escape Tarvalin with the dagger. We then see Ravine, Lanfear, Samael, and Grandal, four of the Forsaken having a meeting. Even though none of them trust each other, they make a pact and agree to leave Randall Thor alone for now and let Lanfear keep an eye on him. Min, Swan, and Lian find themselves as prisoners after accidentally burning down a barn. Loghain was able to escape, but they were caught. They are taken to Lord Gareth Bryn, who used to be the captain of the Queen's Guard to Queen Morghese until he was dismissed. Gareth Bryn sentences them to serve at his estate, but requires an oath from them. Swan gives him the most powerful oath there is, which takes Gareth Bryn by surprise. As they are being taken to Lord Bryn's house, Logan shows up and incapacitates the guards to rescue them. Swan says that she intends to keep her oath to Gareth Bryn, but she never said when. After they escape, Gareth Bryn decides to go after them personally. Swan and her group go to see an Aes Sedai agent that works for the Blue Aja. After the White Tower split, the entire Blue Aja left the White Tower and Swan hopes to learn where they are so they can join them. Swan learns from the agent that the Blue Aja are in the town of Salidar. After Swan and her group arrive at Salidar, they meet up with the rebel Aes Sedai. Swan and Lian look very different after being stilled, so the Aes Sedai ask them many questions to confirm their identity. After they do so, Swan tries to become useful to the Aes Sedai, and she tells them that she still has many contacts and that the Red Aja set Logan up as a false dragon. She also gives them the idea of setting their own Amorlin seat so that they can rival the White Tower. They decide that the new Amerlin should be someone that wasn't involved in the White Tower split. They then receive word that Gareth Bryn has arrived at the village. Swan explains to them why he's here and the rebel Aes Sedai decide to recruit Gareth Bryn since he's one of the great captains. They meet with Gareth Bryn and tell him that the woman he's after is really Swan Sanche but that she can't live with him at the moment. They explain to him their situation and ask him to become their general and form an army to retake the White Tower. Gareth Bryn agrees, but he sets some conditions. He also asks for Swan, Lian, and Min to uphold their oaths. The rebel Aes Sedai agree to his terms. Min tells Swan that she has had a new viewing and tells her that she must stay close to Gareth Bryn, otherwise they will both die. We then see Queen Morghese. An officer named Talenbor tells Morghese that there's a rebellion in the two rivers and that they have raised the Manetheran flag. When Morghese goes to speak to Lord Gabriel, who is her advisor and boyfriend about this, he orders her to go away and she obeys him. Morghese knows that Lord Gabriel is doing something to her to make her obey him, but she doesn't know what. She decides to go see her old nurse Lini, and Lini reminds her of all the friends and allies she has turned away, but Morghese barely remembers doing this. She realizes that Gabriel is taking everything from her, and in order to retake control of her kingdom, she has to escape him first. She decides to run away with Lini, Talenbor, and an old innkeeper named Basil Gill. We switch over to Nynaeve, Elaine, Julian, and Tom, who are on the road towards the White Tower after escaping Tanchico. After they arrive at a small town, Nynaeve and Elaine come across Rondi, who is an agent of the Yellow Aja, and she gives them a message from the White Tower. Rondi also gives Elaine and Nynaeve some tea that is drugged and makes them go to sleep. Thankfully, Tom and Julian arrive to save them. Once Rondi is put to the question, she tells them that she had orders from the Amerlin to capture Elaine. This confuses Nynaeve and Elaine because they were sent away by Swan Sanche. They still don't know that Elida is the new Amerlin. Nynaeve takes some fork root, which was used to drug them, and the group decides to disguise themselves and go on their way. On the road, they meet Balan Luca and his menagerie. 
Luca has come into some hard times and Nynaeve gives him some money. Then they arrive at an inn and Nynaeve goes into Telaranriad, using a dream Terangriel to meet with the Wayne. In Telaranriad, she speaks to Vergita Silverbow, who is one of the heroes of the Horn and is bound to Telaranriad until she is summoned again by the Horn of Valir or she is reborn into a new life. She says that Gaidol Kane, another hero of the Horn and the man she is destined to be with is no longer in Telaranriad, which means he has probably been reborn again and that the Forsaken have been very active in the dream world, except for Mogirian, who she hasn't seen since she fought Nynaeve at Tanchico. Brigitta has been spying on the Forsaken and reporting to Elaine and Nynaeve. Iwain finally appears with the Wise Ones and Iwain and Nynaeve update each other on what has happened to them. Afterwards, Nynaeve goes into the White Tower to see what's going on there and she meets Iwain again. They both start investigating some papers that they found and they learn that Elida is the new Amerlin and that the White Tower is now divided. They also learn that the Blue Aja and other Aes Sedai abandoned the White Tower. Back in the real world, Nynaeve tells Elaine the news so they decide to change their destination and go to Tyr. But Galad appears and he tells them that he has joined the Children of the Light and that he wants to escort them back to Camelin. But Elaine doesn't trust him because Galad always does the right thing and since the Children of the Light hate Aes Sedai, she thinks Galad might turn them in instead. So they decide to sneak out of the town and join Balan Luca in his menagerie to hide from the White Cloaks and escape. Valda Luca takes them in, but Nynaeve and her group have to use their skills to perform different acts in order to blend in. The menagerie has some Sunchan animals that they recognize from Falma, and the trainer turns out to be a woman named Sarandin who is from Sunchan and was left behind in Falma. Aludra is also traveling with them, she used to be a member of the Illuminators Guild. Elaine is studying an Adam that they have in their possession and she mentions to Nynaeve that she may be able to make more of them. Nynaeve goes into Telaranriad again and meets up with Brigitta who tells Nynaeve that the Forsaken are having a meeting in Telaranriad. When they go to spy on the Forsaken, they overhear them saying that they are planning on baiting Rand into attacking Samael. Once Rand does this, the Forsaken will link and overpower Rand. As Nynaeve and Brigitta are leaving, they are ambushed by Mogirian. Mogirian overpowers them, but Brigitta manages to injure the Forsaken with an arrow. Mogirian attacks Brigitta and then she escapes. Back in the real world, Nynaeve thinks she got Brigitta killed, but Tom walks in with an injured Brigitta in his arms and says that she just randomly appeared outside. Mogirian's attack somehow made Birgitta Silverbow appear in the real world and she's in a very bad shape. Elaine makes Birgitta her water because she knows that waters heal faster. After she recovers, she says that she remembers all of her lives, something that shouldn't happen once she's in the real world. Later, the menagerie stops at the town of Samara to perform and Nynaeve comes across Uno who she remembers from Shinar. Uno is one of the Shinaran soldiers that accompanied Ran to Falma to recover the Horn of Valir. Uno says that Masima, another Shinaran soldier that went with Ran to Falma, has become the dragon's prophet and that he can help Nynaeve with whatever she needs. Masima is now a fanatic with a large following and Nynaeve tells him that she needs a boat because she's been summoned by Rand and when Masima learns that Nynaeve grew up with Rand Thor, he agrees to help her. Uno and more Shinaran soldiers decide to join Nynaeve. As they're leaving, they're caught by Galad who says that he will help her get a boat as long as she and Elaine go to Camelin. Nynaeve suddenly remembers that Salidar is the name of the town where the Blue Aja and the other Aes Sedai are gathering. She decides to accept Galad's help without actually promising to go to Camelin. Nynaeve tells Elaine and Brigitta about Masima and Galad and after some time, Galad finally comes to tell them that a ship has arrived. Nynaeve and her group say goodbye to the menagerie and leave for Salidor. After they reach Salidor, the Red Bull Aes Sedai treat Nynaeve and Elaine as runaways but after they explain everything, they learn that Swan sent them to hunt the Black Aja. The Red Bull Aes Sedai can't believe Swan will give that kind of task to some accepted but they decide to let Nynaeve and Elaine stay and resume their training to become Aes Sedai. Gareth Brynn convinces Uno and the Shinarans to join his army 
and Nynaeve and Swan agree to help each other. Nynaeve will teach Swan how to use the ring Terangriel and access Telaranriad and Swan will let Nynaeve study her and Loghain's stillness to see if she can heal them. Nynaeve takes Swan to Telaranriad and starts to teach her what she knows, but one day Mogidian finds her again. Nynaeve is able to take away the ring Terangriel away from Swan and force her out of Telaranriad, but she is still stuck there. Brigitta appears and tries to help Nynaeve, but Mugidian turns her into a baby. Nynaeve gets an idea and she tries to get close to the Forsaken. When she does this, she imagines an Adam around Mugidian's neck and it works. Nynaeve is able to take control of Mugidian and she orders the Forsaken to make Brigitta normal again, which she does, but then Brigitta suddenly wakes up and goes back to the real world. Mogidian begs for her life, and she tells Nynaeve that the Forsaken Ravine has set up a trap for Rand in Camelin, with the hopes that she lets her go, but instead Nynaeve decides to go check if what she says is true, and so both Nynaeve and Mogidian travel to Camelin in Telaranriad. From here we switch over to Rand and his group. Rand Althor is in Rudion. The city is in ruins after his battle with Asmodian, and Asmodian is now Rand's teacher and personal gleeman, who goes by the name of Jason Natel. Rand wants to unite all of the 12 Aeol clans, but after his revelation, only six follow him. Five other clans have not accepted him yet, and the Shiro will not follow him because they are being led by Kulerin, who claims to be the true Karakarn and wants to kill Rand. Moraine shows Rand one of the seals to the Dark One's prison and they notice how weak it is. Rand also starts remembering some of Louis Theron's memories and he thinks it is because he's going insane from the taint inside Dean. Asmodian tells Rand that 13 women linked together can overtake any man and that Ravine has a queen as a pet but doesn't know which queen exactly. After going through the Terangriel in Rudion, Matt Cawthon became fluent in the old tongue and now has many memories from many different people and battles. He still wants to leave and he tells Rand that when the peddlers leave, he will go with them. Matt then starts sleeping with Melindra, who is an Aeol Maiden of the Spear. At night, they are attacked by Dark Hounds and Rand uses Bellfires to kill them. Matt gets bitten by a Dark Hound, but he only has a couple of burns. Moraine tries to heal him, but she is unable to, and they all realize that Matt's Foxhead Medallion that he got from the Fen in Rudion makes him immune to channeling. Moraine tries to take the Medallion to study, but Rand orders her to leave Matt and his Medallion alone. She then tries to talk to Rand about the usage of Bellfire, but Rand doesn't want to listen, so Moraine begs him and promises to obey him if only he will listen to her advice. Rand is surprised to see Moraine or any Aes Sedai act like this, so he accepts to listen to her counsel from now on. She tells him that Bellfire is very dangerous because when it is used on a person or creature, it deletes everything that person or creature did until a certain point. The more powerful the user is, the more it deletes, and Rand is a very powerful being. This is why Matt didn't die after being bitten by the Dark Hound. Rand tells Moraine that he can't promise he won't use it again, and Moraine understands. Lanfear visits Rand again and tells him that Ravine sent the Dark Hounds after him and that he is in control of Camelin because he has Queen Morghese under his control. After she leaves, Rand is told that the Shido and the other five clans are on the move, so Rand decides to follow them. Ewain goes to the White Tower in Telaranriad with Nynaeve and they learn that Elida is the new Amarlin and that the White Tower has split. Ewain tells Moraine about it and she is surprised to see Moraine show almost no emotion about the news. Moraine says that she is not happy about it, but she must continue to help Rand in whatever way she can. As they're following the Shido, they come across a town that was completely destroyed by them. They learn from the survivors that they did this as a message for Rand and that the Shido took some of the townspeople as Gaishan. Gaishan are Aeol people who are captured in battle and have to wear white and obey their captures for a year and a day. This news really disturbs the rest of the Aeol because only an Aeol can be made Gaishan and making outsiders Gaishan is considered taboo. 
One night, Rand's camp is attacked by Shadowspawn, but they are quickly taken care of. Rand speaks to Osmorian about the attack, and Rand says that he remembers Samael using this kind of attacks during the War of Power. He quickly realizes that that's one of Louis Theron's memories and not one of his. Rand tells the Aeol not to kill anyone or loot anything without reason because he doesn't want the Aeol to be seen as an invading force in the Westlands. Rand comes across some lords from Tyr that he sent to Kyrian before he went to the Aeol Waste and he learns that the Shido are attacking Kyrian but that they haven't taken the city yet. Rand tells them to go back to Kyrian and that if they can hold on for 7 days he will arrive with the Aeol to defend the city. Avienda is taking a bath when Rand walks in on her naked. She panics and makes a gateway to get away from him. She has no idea how a gateway works and ends up going to a very cold and snowy place. Rand takes her clothes and some blankets and goes after her. Avienda passes out from the cold but Rand makes a snow hut and with the one power he brings her back to consciousness. After she wakes up, she says that the rings don't lie and kisses Rand. Then the two end up having sex. As they're going back to the gateway, they spot some people riding a flying creature and they turn out to be Soldam and the money. Avienda made a gateway to the continent of Sanchan all the way across the Aerith Ocean. As they're crossing the gateway, the Sanchan throw a spear at Rand, but he catches it. Rand decides to keep the Sanchan spear as a reminder that the Sanchan are still out there and that he will have to deal with them at some point. After Rand and his army arrive outside Korean, they start forming a plan of attack to defeat Kulerin and the Shido. Matt goes to see Rand and say goodbye. He says he wants nothing to do with this war and just wants to live a peaceful life. When Matt sees the battle plan, Lan asks for his opinion and Matt uses his newfound memories to point out every weakness and strength and ends up improving the plan. Rand kinda figures that Matt got his battle tactics from the Terangriel in Rudion. As the battle begins, Rand, Avienda and Iwain channel storms, lightning and fireballs from atop a tower. On the ground, Matt is leaving the battle to go live his peaceful life. He goes to the top of a hill and notices that some of Rand's army is walking straight into an ambush. So he decides to go warn them but he ends up taking command of them and he sets up a plan to defeat the incoming Shido and it works. He's then informed that more Shido are coming and that Kulerin is with them. Matt sets up a plan that will ensure that Kulerin attacks him and his men and he ends up finding himself face to face with Kulerin and Matt kills him. Rand is still on top of a tower channeling when he's attacked by Samael. Sun made him sub the spear die and Rand's old side wound reopens. At night, Lan tells him that the battle is over and he has won. The Shadow are all running away. Rand releases Aideen and he passes out. When he wakes up, he's told that more Aeol clans have decided to follow him but some of the Shadow escaped and that Matt killed Kulerin. Rand realizes that no matter how hard Matt tries to get away, he can't escape the pool of Tiberian. Rand and the Aeol march into Kyrian and all of the nobles make oaths of fealty to Rand, but he decides not to take the Korean throne because he says that it belongs to someone else. The people that Matt led against the Shido and Kulerin now see him as their leader. They tell him that no matter where he goes, they will follow him. Matt decides to name his new followers the Band of the Red Hand after the famous group that fought for Manetherin during the Trolloc Wars. Rand receives two letters from Tarvalin inviting him to the White Tower but Rand doesn't trust him. He's instead planning on going after Samael and Ilion and he summons Matt and orders him to plan the attack but after Matt tells him that there's a rumor going around that Lord Gabriel is the new king of Camelin after the death of Queen Morghese, Rand changes his plans. Rand knows that Lord Gabriel is the Forsaken Ravine and since Morghese was Elaine's mother, he decides to go after Ravine instead. Matt leaves and he's still contemplating leaving Rand behind, so he goes to his room and starts packing but Melindra, the Aeol woman he's been sleeping with, walks in on him. Matt tells her that he's leaving and that Rand is going to Camelin. After Melindra hears this, she attacks him and tries to kill him but Matt kills her instead. 
He asks her why, but she only mentions that he has the great lord's own luck before she dies. Matt looks at the knife she tried to kill him with and notices that it has 9 bees on it and the flag of Ilian also has 9 bees which makes Matt realize that Samael sent Melindra to kill him because she was a dark friend. He then goes to see Rand and tells him everything that happened with Melindra and that he is now ready to help him go kill the Forsaken. They're then joined by Moraine and she gives Rand two letters that are both from her. One is for him and another for Tom Marilyn. She then tells Rand to follow her to the docks. We then see Hadnan Kadir, who is the peddler that Rand and the Aeol found in the Aeol Waste. Kadir is a dark friend and he is visited by Lanfear. He informs Lanfear that Rand has been sleeping with Avienda and Lanfear doesn't take the news well. She skins Kadir alive and confronts Rand at the docks. She tells him that he belongs to her and then sends Land and Moraine flying with a weave and incapacitates Ewing and Avienda. Rand struggles to stop Lanfear and he can't bring himself to kill another woman after memories from Louis Theron Telemon killing his wife come pouring in. He is ready to die, when out of nowhere, Moraine appears and tackles Lanfear into the twisted doorframe Terangriel from Rudion. The Terangriel immediately breaks as they go through it and Lan feels the water bond between him and Moraine break. Lan gets ready to leave and tells Rand that Moraine passed his water bond to another Aes Sedai some time ago and that he must go to find her. After Lan leaves, Rand reads the letter Moraine left him and it says that she knew this day was coming. She knew ever since she went into Rudion but that it had three different outcomes. One was exactly what went down, another was Rand dying and the last was him leaving with Lanfear and becoming her lover. She also leaves him with a couple of warnings. One is not to trust any Aes Sedai and the second is not to trust Jason Natel. Moraine knew that Natel was Asmodian all along. Rand gathers everyone that is going to Camelin with him and he creates a gateway with a giant platform and teleports everyone into Camelin. As soon as they arrive, they are attacked. There's Trollocs waiting for them and Ravine channels a lightning strike that Rand cannot stop in time and it ends up killing Matt, Avienda and Asmodian. This makes Rand go into rage mode and he follows Ravine blindly into the world of dreams where Ravine has more control than Rand and Rand finds himself really struggling against him. Nynaeve arrives and she finds Rand fighting with Ravine. She tries to help Rand but Mogidian tells her that both Rand and Ravine are in Teleranriad in the flesh which makes them way more stronger than them. Nynaeve doesn't care and she manages to distract Ravine for a moment. Rand notices that Ravine is distracted with something and he takes the opportunity to blast him with Bellfire. Afterwards, Nynaeve goes to see Rand and she tells him that Vinin Teleranriad in the flesh is dangerous. She then heals him and Rand returns to the real world. Nynaeve gives Mogidian some fork root to make her go to sleep. She thinks she knows where Mogidian is in the real world and wants to go after her. Back in Camelin, Rand finds the Aeol still fighting the Shadowspawn. He also finds Matt, Asmorian and Avienda alive and well and he remembers what Moraine told him. Since he killed Ravine with Bellfire, his actions were undone until a certain point and now his friends are back. With Rand's help, the Aeol managed to defeat the remaining Shadowspawn. After the battle, Rand gets a visit from the general of Saldea, Davran Bashir. He tells Rand that he has been sent by the Queen of Saldea to hunt down the false dragon, Masram Taim, that escaped from Saldea. But Rand tells him that he can't have him because he's planning on giving amnesty to any man that can channel. Rand says that he will need every man and woman that can channel at the last battle. Bashir accepts Rand's decision and he also decides to join him. Lastly, we see Asmodian as he goes to look for some wine. When he opens the pantry door, he finds someone waiting for him. Asmodian recognizes this person and then he dies.